Hi, Elaine here. Today, I'll share how to create a gradient to create rainbow style planner rings in Affinity Publisher. If you've been following along with this series, you'll be familiar with this file. If not, check out the links in the description. But today, I'm doing something a little bit different. In response to an inquiry from a viewer, who said the planner rings are great, but they would love them to have a rainbow applied to them going from top to bottom. And that is not that difficult to do. Now we're going to need a gradient to apply here. So first job is to create that gradient. Now the way I do this is to just use a shape and apply a gradient to it. So using the gradient tool, drag down from the top all the way to the bottom. It really doesn't matter what color is in that at the moment, it could be anything. What I'm going to do is add some extra points. So at the moment we have two points, one at the top, one at the bottom. They're indicated by these color wells. You can see the halfway point, there is a tiny line on it. You hover over that and click, and you add a third point. It also does something extra. The something extra it does is add two more midway points. One between the middle and the bottom, so I'm going to click there, and one between the middle and the top, so I'm going to click there. That gives me five points. One at the top, second one, third one, fourth one, fifth one. Now what I've done to make this a little bit easier for me and less time consuming for you to watch is I've created a palette called Gradient Source and that has my five colours in it that I want included in the gradient. You don't need to do that. What you can do with this is choose the colour, go into your swatches preview and just choose a colour from in there. Obviously that would take a little bit longer and I know what these colours are. So this is my gradient stop one. Then I select the next colour well and add two and so forth until I've got five. You can add as many points as you like. They don't all have to be halfway. So I've got the blue, haven't I? Hang on, I've added an extra one. Let's undo that and let's get to the bottom one. But you can add extra points if you want and you can move these points if you want to move them. And that changes the gradient. But I will put that back to where it was. Each one of those is 0, 25%, 50%, 75% and 100% along the path of that gradient. If you want to know how I know that, if you use this gradient tool at the top and I click on the yellow, you can see there it's saying position 25% and 50% and 75%. Right, so now we've got the gradient. What I'm going to do now is add that gradient as a colour swatch. Now, I can't add it as a global colour because it's a gradient. So even though this is a document palette, I'm adding it as a standard fill and it adds it as, at the bottom. So I'm going to rename it. So this is my gradient. One thing not to do with this is if you right click and think, oh, I'll edit the fill from there, you're only editing one point. So if I were to click away, my gradient has disappeared now. It's all red. So I'm going to undo that. We do not want that to happen. If you need to edit your gradient, the way to do it is to add a shape. So I've added another one with the gradient in it, make the changes to it and then add that back to your palette. But once I have my gradient in that palette, I can delete these. The next step is to be able to select the planner rings. Now, if you've seen the previous video, you'll know the easiest way to do that. There is an option in Affinity Publisher. It is Window States. And what I did in the last video was I created a query which enabled me to select any layer called planner ring. So if I open that up where the layer name is planner ring, and you have three options in your states. You can select, you can hide, or you can view. One thing to do before you do anything is make sure that the scope is set correctly. It defaults to document, but in this case, I have different planner rings on different pages. So I need to limit the scope to the spread. So making sure that that says spread, and then it's a simple matter of just clicking that option. 
and that selects all of the planner rings. If we look in the layers, you can see that the text box for page four is not selected. All of the others are a deep blue, meaning that they are. But within each of these layers, only one element is selected, and that is the planner ring. The holes are left alone. The highlight is left alone. It's only selected the planner ring. At that point, you don't need the states panel anymore. So I will close that. And it's a simple matter of applying the gradient to this. So going across to my source and applying the gradient. That probably is not what you were expecting. And I know it's not what was requested by the person requesting it. Right, what's happened is it's applied the gradient within each of the planner rings, not across all of the planner rings. But that is easy to fix. So with the planner rings still selected, I'm going to go across and choose my gradient tool. And you can see here, uh, let's zoom in so you can see it even better, that it has applied the gradient, but it's done it across one of these planner rings and then replicated that on all of the other planner rings, which is definitely not what we want. But it's very simple to fix it. With them selected, I'm going to click at the top and drag down with the gradient tool and you should be able to see what's happening, which is it's taking the gradient, it's applying the top colour at the top and going all the way through to the last colour at the bottom, which is exactly what we want. Once you've done that, if you think, well, I'd rather the purple were at the top, that's absolutely fine. Just draw it up from the bottom and it will flip it round. I much prefer it the other way. So let's draw it back in. And now it's applied. I happen to have another palette, which is gradients, different gradients. So if I apply that, because I've drawn the gradient out, I don't have to go through the process of selecting everything again and then applying the gradient and then changing how it's applied to the shapes. The gradient is going from top to bottom on the selected shapes and I can then change that to any other gradient and it will apply without me having to tweak it in the slightest. That is how you make rainbow planner rings in Affinity Publisher. Let's take a quick recap. Create the gradient using a shape that you can delete when you've done. Add that gradient to a colour palette for easy reuse. Then select all the planner rings. There are various ways to do that, but the way I used was using the States panel. If you want to see how to set that up, check out the previous video. Link is in the description. Then you apply the gradient. If the gradient doesn't apply in the way that you wish, then use the gradient tool to configure how it's actually displayed across all of the shapes that you have selected. If you want new tutorials and tips and tricks on a regular basis, check out my free training at elainegiles.com VIP. Hit the subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss future tutorials. And if you have any requests for specific tutorials, be sure to contact me. I would love to hear from you. Thanks for watching and see you next time.